Oh boy. Mm -hmm. I'll wait till noon to do my official introduction. I want to make sure that we're actually on. Is this where we do the tap dance? <laughs> Soft shoe? It, it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should <laughs> say okay. 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 warm up the group. <laughs> Okay, welcome to everybody who's here watching our Facebook Live MBA info session. Uh, the person who is talking to you right now from behind the camera is me, Francesca Shanks, MCLA's social media manager. And I'm just going to run things from behind the screen. Please type your questions and comments in the comment thread below this post. And I'll just get started by asking the three people in front of you to introduce themselves. Good morning, thank you very much for having us today, Francesca. Um, my name is Joshua Mendel, and I'm the Director of Recruitment and Outreach, specifically for the MBA program, and I've been working with the MBA program since the inception in 2010. My name is Dr. Tom Whalen, I'm a business professor, and uh, I teach courses in the MBA program, and I've been teaching this for uh, three years now. And my name is Tara Barbosa, I'm an assistant professor of accounting here at but I was actually a graduate of the very first cohort of uh, MCLA's MBA program. Oh, cool. So, before we have questions from our audience, I, we've prepared some just so you get the great info session treatment that you might want. Um, so, let's start by just having somebody give a brief overview of MCLA's MBA program. So, the MBA program started by the college and the Berkshire Compact going out to the businesses and industries and really working with them to understand how do we keep our professionals in the region? How do we continue to grow and build our industries within Berkshire County? And the MBA program um, was created from that discussion. Um, a lot of the professionals really wanted to be able to recruit and grow their own students and their own employees to help build their industries. And so we started our professional MBA program. It's a professional MBA program for working professionals. People are balancing their family life, their work life, and continuing their education at the same time. The MBA program starts in the fall in a cohort model, and people travel through the program together to support one another through each class. It's one class a semester, um, or two classes a semester, but one class at a time. So every eight weeks, students transition their coursework. Um, as they continue through the program. If the students already had a background in business, business administration degree as an undergrad, they could start with 30 credit program. If a student has a background in sociology or a degree in psychology, they would be able to enter into our 45 credit program. Classes meet in person every other Saturday from about nine in the morning to four in the afternoon with an hour break for lunch. So you're getting that hands-on in classroom experience, being able to work with your colleagues in the class, the professors and the material, but then in between classes, it's all online work as well, and potential group work. And Tara is a great example of the program who's been very, very successful with her career since, and Tom is one of our instructors within the program and has really helped the students foster through the MBA piece. Terry, what was your experience as a student like in this program? Um, so the experience was really positive. I got to meet a lot of professionals in the area. Um, some of the students were from as far away as maybe Bennington and Pittsfield, so it was a good group of um, professionals from the, the entire region, um, or at least short area. And we would commit every Saturday, and we would go out to lunch at noon, and I think that was our favorite part because we got to talk about what we did in class and really discuss things a little bit more on a personal level. Um, and I committed, I would say, probably two to five hours a week outside of the classroom for our work, and that kind of scaled up a little bit um, when we had group projects too. Was it a long process for you to decide to enroll? No. Um, I was very excited. I had actually been looking for programs, and the cost of programs was really, really high. And they weren't all quite as convenient and certainly not as local as this program. So once I had uh, found out that MCLA was going to be offering it, I was, you know, banging on the door waiting for them to open the door. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Josh, how many people have graduated from our MBA program so far? 
So we're close to 80 students that have graduated from the program. Um, it's nice because, like I said, it's working professionals. So the average age within the program is between 30 and 40. Um, people with an average work experience of 10 years. Um, and people who are really committed to watching Berkshires grow and utilizing this as an opportunity to advance themselves, to advance the companies, and to advance the community also. You mentioned a cohort model also. Can you speak a little bit more to what that is? Sure, so the cohort model is primarily the students start the program in September and they travel through the program together. They use each other for help, they use each other for support, for bouncing ideas off of one another, for brainstorming one, for brainstorming as they go through the projects, but they really kind of travel through as a family. So they're there for each other and making sure that the students who start the program complete the program at the same time. Um, the other nice piece about this cohort model is it creates a network for the students. So when they graduate or they're going through this program and one particular student is working on a project of maybe doing business in China, marketing a concept to China, then a student who may have already been successful in that within their own business can now help and partner one another. It also makes a nice opportunity when they're complete with the program and people are looking for advancements within their own business or people are looking for new endeavors or starting their own businesses or companies. They have this solid network of students, not just in their cohort, but students who may be in the cohort ahead of them or the cohort who's just coming up from behind them as well. Before I ask another question, I just want to interject to everybody who's watching at home that they can type questions in the comment thread just below this video. So please go ahead and do that if you have a burning question. And of course, uh, you can find out a ton more about this program at mcla.edu slash MBA. So now I'm going to ask Tom Whalen, who is a faculty member here, uh, what are some strengths that you identify in our MBA program? I would think there's uh, three that I, right off the top of my head, that, that I, I'd say makes our program really good. The first is the faculty. Um, we have faculty that are coming from the corporate world who have, have experienced solving problems and they're familiar with the course material. We, we have uh, also a dedicated set of, of academics who are up on the latest research on everything. Uh, from marketing to uh, finance, um, uh, account right here, our accountant uh, Tara is going to be teaching in the program soon. Um, the other thing it, that that uh, really brings a lot to the classroom is the cohort model itself, because we put together these cohorts with people with diverse uh, professional experiences. That though that they just come in and and they I learn just as much from from my classroom experience as my students do. Uh, two years ago, we were, I was teaching a management course and uh, had some readings, and my students would actually we start at nine. Typically, I would get there about eight thirty. I'd get the coffee pot going, everything. My students would already be there talking about the things they read in the books and, and applying them and, oh, yeah, what do you think about this and what about that? I, and I had to hurry and get there and get the coffee going because there they go. I must, I must catch, catch them before I am their leader. <laughs> um, so I will, um, I'm going to stop you because we have questions. A question? Yes, we do. Juan asks, how many faculty members are involved in our MBA program? So, let's see. Me, Charlie, Nancy. Um, so we have, we have six regular full-time faculty, and we have about seven or eight adjuncts that come in on a regular basis. Um, and those folks are coming from the professional world, from the marketing world, from the, from the uh, manufacturing world, um, from finance. And so, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. So, 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 lots so we have a total of about, about 13. Um, a couple, we, we also bring in some folks from other departments on campus. We bring in Davey from 
the uh, uh, computer science to teach our uh, business information systems uh, class. So we focus in on, uh, on expertise and experience with our faculty. Another question from Jesse. Can you talk about the application requirements, please? Is it still possible to apply for the fall? And I think it is, right? It is, yes. Great question. Um, we are still accepting applications to start this September. Um, the application process is very simple. It's an application itself. It's right online at mcla.edu backslash MBA. Um, three letters of reference, preferably at least one or two from current or recent supervisors. Um, copy of the undergraduate transcripts, and we would need official transcripts by the beginning of the term. Um, and then a resume and personal statement. Once all that information is collected and submitted to the admissions office, then we would arrange for an interview with the student with our selection committee and faculty members. Um, so we are still accepting applications for this fall semester, and the process is very simple, and I'm more than happy to help students with any questions or concerns they have mm -hmm. as well. And we no longer make the students run a marathon, right? We yeah. do not. No, 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 no more marathon running, so you're, you're fine. Kind of delayed the process a little bit. <laughs> Another question, also from Juan. Uh, up until when will you accept applications? I think we have a rolling deadline, right? So we are rolling admissions process. The program does start in September. We will be accepting applications right up until the middle of August. Very nice. However, we would encourage sooner than later because seats do fill quickly. We have a maximum of what, 18, 18, students. 18 students in each cohort, and we have, what, 10 of those filled so far? Mm -hmm. Another question from Jesse, if you graduated from MCLA, how do we send transcripts? So that's a very easy process. Um, on the application, we want to make sure that the student does indicate that they've graduated from MCLA, and we can pull their transcripts from our data system. It does not need to have a separate request for our registrar's office. Oh, that's good. And mm -hmm. can you go right from your undergrad studies at MCLA into the MBA program if that's what you want to do? It depends on how much professional experience you have. Okay. So, for example, we have one student who just graduated, but he also uh, was in the Army for uh, eight years. He did, he did a total of four, four tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. And so he's bringing a wealth of real-world experience if you are 22 and uh, it just depends on how much professional experience you have that you're, you're coming in mm -hmm. with. That is a good time for this question. Uh, Terry, what are some traits of successful students that you see in this program? I mean, you can all answer that one. If, it, who's, if you're ready for this MBA program, what are some qualities that you possess? So I think the biggest one is commitment. Um, we all have life going on. I had three kids at home. I had a business that I was growing. Um, but you just have to commit not only to yourself, but to your cohort. Um, I think the other thing is really getting to know your cohort, to the cohort, take advantage of that because they will be, as Josh said, your support system as you go through. So commit to commit for yourself, but also commit for the people that you're with. And then make sure you schedule yourself well. You really have to commit some additional time outside of the classroom. Uh, the faculty was really great about, you know, if you had a wedding or something and maybe you needed to miss a day, but, but you don't want to miss too much time because there's so much happening in the classroom um, that it's really important that you're here. So just commit, schedule, and, um, and make it your priority. It, it goes so quick, and the time is going to go by either way. So you can either have the two years go by and you don't have an MBA, mm -hmm. or you can have the two years go by and you do have an MBA. So, so Tara, I would, I would add that um, one of the things you probably don't want to be is a procrastinator. Yeah. Um, you don't want to wait till the very last minute, the night before, to get your reading done for the class. Uh, so I think your idea of scheduling, where so, I got my uh, doctorate here seven years ago, seven years ago, um, and, and one of the things that I did when I was in a doctoral program is I blocked out time every day, regardless of what day of the week it was, and to do some work, and I would, um, so my lunch hour, 
I would be at, off with the boys and girls doing stuff uh, in lunch hour. I would spend my lunch hour reading and, and then get home, do the work, and, th and then I would have two hours in the evening. And so I, it's really important to, on top of that commitment, to have blocks of time all the time where you're going to get your work done. And, and participate, really participate and take advantage of that classroom time because the more that you're participating and talking with your colleagues in the classroom, the better you're going to do at home when you're doing your work. And, and they'll help you, you know, the, it's such a great support system having that going. And that's one of the strengths of the program that Tom was talking about, is it's one class at a time. So you can really take your energy and your enthusiasm and focus it on one subject matter before you transition to the next. So it's it's pulling the program apart and conquering it in chunks, as opposed to just trying to jump in and doing two, three classes in one where you might not necessarily be ready for that piece. Mm -hmm. So it's really just one step at a time, and we're going to help and support you to make sure that you start and finish. So another question. Uh, if I am understanding this right, one class is eight weeks, and we meet in person every other week on Saturday. Therefore, we would only meet in person four times per class. What were the times, again, that the classes meet? And I'll so, read that back to you again if you need so to. So typically, we, um, we meet, depending on the course, uh, either three or four times. We usually try to avoid uh, week, holiday weekends, such as Columbus Day weekend and Thanksgiving weekend. So, so in those eight week periods, we will meet either three or four times. Uh, we usually show up at nine o'clock in the morning, unless you're like that one class of mine, uh, and run to usually three or four in the afternoon. I run my class like a business. If all the work is done, we don't stick around extra. Um, don't tell me. <laughs> I don't tell anybody. How's that? Does that answer your question, Francesca? I think so. So, one class, eight weeks. We meet in person every other week on Saturday, yes. Somebody is telling me that mcla.edu slash mba is a bad link, but I just want to let you know if you type it into your browser, it does work, and I am trying to fix the post, but mcla.edu slash mba will get you right to our mba page let's see what else mm -hmm. what advice would you provide a new mba student as a professor get jump right in with both feet uh, do not procrastinate get on your assignments early so as Tara said, you can um, make sure you're participating in the classroom. The, we have some really rich discussions in the classroom. I mean, I mean, really rich. And I learn just as much from my students as they learn from me. Everybody's bringing in real world experiences. We're applying it to the material that we have. But if you haven't prepared yourself for that discussion, you're letting not only yourself down, but your classmates down as well. And so, so preparation, don't procrastinate, get the, those assignments done as early as possible, and, uh, and by spreading things out, you can, uh, you're going to be much more successful. Here is another question. Talk a little more about faculty support. In addition to classroom time, what kind of access do we have to faculty and MCLA resources? So, for regular full-time faculty, we're here all the time. Um, I mean, we're, right now we're on the second floor of uh, Murdoch Hall. All the, fa the business faculty are right downstairs on the first floor. And uh, if they're n not there, they're in the classroom. Um, most likely what you'll want to do is uh, set up an appointment with somebody, say, uh, hey, I'm, I'm going to be getting off at work. At 3.30 this afternoon, can I meet you at 4? And we'll make sure we're there. I mean, the faculty are committed to our students. I mean, uh, in one of my past lives, I was a Navy flight instructor. And on the wall, over the door, as you walked into the ready room, it said, D 
The job of the instructor is to help the ins student learn. It's not to teach, it's to help the student learn. And I think all of us are committed to our students learning, whether that's learning by yourself, or learning uh, amongst the cohort, learning in the classroom, um, learning one-on-one -on -one in, in office hours, whatever it is, we're committed to your learning. I think if I can just add, yeah. one of the big advantages too um, is that you know, as a small school, small cohort, you really get to know the faculty members um, very, very closely. And uh, you also have, you know, as opposed to maybe somebody who's considering a program that's 100% online, you, you can't just raise your hand and ask a question when you're in a program like that. Here, you can, you know, email the faculty member anytime, you can make appointments, you can ask it in the classroom because you do have that classroom experience. So you, you just have so much access. And just, we also have an orientation session with the students. So at the end of August, before they start their first course, we have the students work with our library services. We have the students work with um, our Canvas services, which is the online component to this piece. Um, and the students have full access to all the resources here on campus as well. Um, so we're making sure that they are well supported. Um, many of the faculty will do FaceTime or Skype meetings, um, email exchanges back and forth, phone calls, late night hours if need be. I mean, they really go out of their way to make sure because they understand. Again, they're trying to balance their work life, their family life in these classes, and it may not be conducive at 3 o'clock in the afternoon to make a quick phone call to a faculty member. They may have to wait till chores are done, dinner is done, kids are in bed, and then they can have a chance to focus on the work. Juan asks, do I need to take the GRE for the application process if I have 10 years of professional experience and a BA? We do not require the GREs. Oh my god, I bet a bunch of people at home just went, what? <laughs> yes! Yeah, we, we had to take that. So, I think Nancy's just changed up, right? To Who's recap, changing? no GRE no required GREs and for no, this. No GMATs. Um, unless they're going through the interview process and the committee really feels like there should be some substance. Mm -hmm. um, but we're primarily looking at work experience. Um, the undergraduate transcripts the students have, the letters of reference, and the opportunities that they've had to meet the faculty during the interview process. People can like this stream as it's going on, and we just got like a handful of hearts about that. That's nice. How about networking opportunities? As a young professional or an older professional, I think people are always thinking about that. What kinds of opportunities does MBA, the MBA program provide in that realm? Um, so I, I can start, and then I think my colleagues can chime in here. So you, you get faculty networking, you get cohort uh, networking, you get networking with the cohort that is uh, immediately preceding you and your first year and then following you your second year. Uh, you get uh, alums, you get, get that, but you also get some networking when you do project work in the community. So for example, they did that. Two years ago, they, they actually did a, a project, um, a feasibility project for a hotel on North Street in Pittsfield, which has since turned into Hotel on North. And I know that several folks were able to network off of just their project work from, from there, and they you make connections and you meet people. Um, we have speakers come into the classroom, and you network there. Uh, plus, like, if you go on LinkedIn, I, I know a lot of people from my time in the Navy and my time in, in uh, the computer industry, and so you, you have those kind of networks. Tara, what do you think? So, um, I, I think you summed it up really well. My experience was that my cohort all had a lot of professional experience, and we really got to know each other very close, so I was invited to networking opportunities that they were attending for with their jobs. Um, and then there were the networking opportunities that MCLA also had, um, you know, different events that were happening here. As part of my project, we did a fantastic um, program with uh, Tanglewood, where we spent an entire day with all of the heads of the BSO, and they really went into great detail 
about um, the operations of Tanglewood and the BSL. And so we had an opportunity to meet with just some phenomenal minds and, and really have great discussions with them. We also got to meet with Sheila Keeter, who I think she's on the board. Yes, yes. Um, and that was a great networking opportunity, meeting with her and her sons and, and learning about their business. And since then, I have reached out to some of the people that I've met through the MBA program and used those connections for lots of things. Um, I think it was one time where I just had a, a question and um, a colleague that was in the program with me was an expert in finance, so I was able to contact him and just say, you know, hey, I just want to run something by you. Um, I also had a student who was looking for an internship, and I was able to reach out to some of the different businesses that I worked with in the MBA program to set one up. Um, so you will have lots of opportunities if you participate. If you make yourself available and you want to have opportunities, there, there will be a ton of them for you. Someone else is commenting that the advertised site is not working. Uh, I have just tested it. It is working. If you type it into your browser, it will work. And I just clicked it from the Facebook Live post. So Perhaps that should work, Google just to say. MCLA MBA program. Um, yeah, we, or you can just Google MCLA MBA program, true. We just had a few new people join, and we're at the halfway point. So I think I'm going to ask for you to provide a brief overview again, just in case somebody has jumped on Lee. So the MCLA MBA program was created 10 years ago to support the businesses and industries and our professionals within Berkshire County um, to help our businesses and our community continue to grow. Um, the MBA program is designed in a cohort model, so students are traveling through the program together, supporting each other and creating um, successful and useful networks. It's two classes a semester, but one class at a time. Every eight weeks, the students transition their coursework. If a student comes in with an undergraduate degree in business, they, it's a 30 credit program. If a student comes in with a background in psychology or sociology or the sciences, it's a 45 credit program. Um, classes meet in person every other Saturday from usually 9 until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, there are 10 core, um, sorry, I'm sorry, seven core classes and three elective classes within the 30 credit program. And those three elective classes have been really dynamic. This year we've tried something new where we've taken one of those courses and instead of three credits, we've separated it out for one credit each of the um, other week that the program, that the course is running. So one credit, the students are working very closely with one particular business industry, learning about one topic. Then the next week they transition to another business industry core topic and then a third business. So they gain the three credits within one course, but it's really a fluctuation and a well-rounded understanding within that particular topic of three ways that industries look at one particular subject area. So that's been very interesting and on the real demand of the students' request this past year. Can you talk a little bit about the core classes as well? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at, in the 30 credit program, seven core classes. Those core classes are spread out over the period of 18 months, and it gives a very solid foundation for subject material that the students are going to need um, to obtain that MBA and be successful within the businesses and industries the workforce. If students going into the 45 credit program, those five additional classes are classes that are core foundation within the businesses. Marketing, management, economics, um, there's an accounting foundation built into those as well. Would we take classes just during the fall and spring semester, or are there summer classes required as well? Asks Jesse. What the uh, so we have typically two summer courses between your first and second uh, years, um, and those are usually uh, they're usually electives, right? Yeah, there's one elective, and then the other one is operations and project management. Operations and project management. So that's operations management is a is a required course. Uh, next year, there's this is not nailed down, but they're talking about perhaps a a trip to China. Uh, Professor Khan and I are talking about um, putting together a, a, a trip where we spend a couple weeks in Shanghai. Uh, and uh, but we have. 
we typically, for the electors, we try to tailor them to, uh, while MBA programs not necessarily democracy, we try to, to tailor the electors to, to the biggest demand. So like, for example, right now, I think there's a demand for a course in, in healthcare management. And so uh, Dr. Obitsky, our, our program uh, manager, is looking to, to put together a course for that. So if a student is, is considering the 30 credit program, it would be two classes in the fall, break for winter, um, start back up in January, you know, January to March for a class, March to May for a class, and then two classes over the course of the summer. You're back at two classes the following fall, two classes the spring, you graduate in the following May. So it's 18 months um, straight through. I want to just remind everybody that they are welcome to continue to ask questions. We keep getting questions. Thank you for asking them. I just figured that I would throw that out there. Uh, I also want to hear a little bit about alumni success stories. I know we've had people who have gotten their MBA and been promoted or have been able to run their business better. And so, Josh, I know you know really well those kinds of stories. Yeah, absolutely. And Tara can certainly chime in. And I know Tom's been working very closely with a lot of our students postgraduate as well. Um, we have four or five excellent stories that are posted right at the MBA website that students can refer to. Um, we had a gentleman who started the program in the banking industry and was recruited right out of our MBA program by another bank <laughs> um, in, in a much more grand position opportunities. Um, we had a student that went off to start his own business and now has been a very successful entrepreneur within the Berkshires and continues to grow. We've had students who've started their own restaurants. We've had students who gained um, several different promotions and opportunities to grow within their businesses. We've had students who started in one profession and are now doing international business work. Um, we've had students who um, began the program in an entry-level position and now are running their own companies. So we've seen a lot of great success and a lot of opportunities for students to really thrive through the network of this program, through the content and the, uh, of the material and the opportunities to work with the professors. Um, but the word is out there in the brochures about our MBA program. And like I said, people are looking at our cohorts and coming in and recruiting directly from them. And Tara, you've had some amazing success as well. Yeah, um, uh, first I just want to kind of add that I think I keep in regular contact with most people in my cohort, and I can't name one that didn't receive a promotion or a raise probably within a year, or a year and a half of completing the program. Some of them right away or when they entered the program. Um, myself, uh, my business certainly grew very, very quick. I made a lot of contacts through the program. Um, and through my networking, I uh, was contacted by the college and then now doing a completely new career, which I never expected to do, so that's kind of exciting. Um, but it just opens up so many opportunities. I think Bonnie um, is another great example. Uh, she opened Mountain View Healthcare, and they just did a, a great story on her. Uh, she was a nurse, and she you know, was, I think, kind of tired of working for other people and decided she was going to start her own company and now she's a multi-million dollar company so she's doing fantastic um, so everybody in my cohort and everyone that I've kept in contact with through the program saw immediate um, monetary and, and other types of benefits so this is definitely not just a program for people who live here in the Berkshires then. oh no we, um, we have folks from uh, the other side of state we have, uh, I think we've had a couple from Connecticut, several Vermonters, uh, New Yorkers from the Capital uh, Region, um, had somebody from Worcester, uh, a lot from the Pioneer Valley. I think uh, Aziz also, um, who was in my cohort, I believe he you know, did his MBA program because he wanted to take that back to South Africa where he was from and apply that knowledge to help people in his community back there. So, I mean, it's really a world oh, wow. reach. Yeah. The in-person every other Saturday really makes the program accessible to students who may be living outside the region um, or even alums that may be interested in coming back um, and getting their MBA from their undergraduate institution. 
because uh, I know we're gonna have people hopping on and off of this, will you again speak to application deadlines and the timeline and what is required? Absolutely, so we are on a rolling admission over the course of the summer. Um, we will be stopping our application process probably mid-August because we do start the cohort in September. So we want everybody on board, everybody begin to get settled. Um, the application process is very simple. The application is online, showing take 10 to 15 minutes to complete. We look for three letters of reference, a personal statement, and the prompt is in the application, a resume, and the undergraduate transcripts. Once we have that complete, then we establish an interview process with faculty members um, and hopefully be able to offer admission from that point. We begin the next cohort uh, at the end of August is our orientation session, and we start the next week in September. Um, well, we do the, do the next week in September is Labor Day. It's the weekend right after Labor Day we start. Mm -hmm. And we do do a, uh, only a fall admissions process for the program. So if a student is not unable to attend this fall, then they would have a chance to start next September. If you're interested in this, but you know like this is not going to be your year, but you still want to get the process started, is it possible to just meet with somebody in person here? Sure. Absolutely. We'd be happy to sit down with any student who may be interested in the program. We also, if a student wants to see the dynamics of the classroom experience, we'd be happy to make arrangements for them to sit in briefly on one of our Saturday classes. Um, or if they'd like to sit down with faculty members or alums of the program, we'd be happy to make those arrangements as well. So I'm going to start winding down this Facebook Live event. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. If you have additional questions, please type them in. And of course, if this is over and you're watching it after the fact and you have more questions, Josh, who can someone email if they have additional questions? Absolutely. They're welcome to contact me directly at jmendel, so j-m-e-n-d-e-l, at mcla.edu. We also um, have our links to our contact information on our website, mcla.edu backslash mba. And um, we are more than happy to make arrangements again for them to meet with us in person, to take phone calls, we can do FaceTime or Skype meetings, or have the students come in and sit in the class and get a feel for the program. Have you met with people in Pittsfield as well? We do. We do meet we do. at the Federal County Building um, right in downtown Pittsfield. Oh, great. So if you're like in Egremont and you can't get up to North Adams, we're happy to meet that will work. We actually interviewed somebody down in uh, Panera Bread last, last summer. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. So uh, we're I just flexible. So Jesse says, I just want to say thank you so much for holding this Facebook Live session. This has been extremely helpful in answering several Welcome, questions Jesse. I had. So thank you for coming, Jesse, and thank you everybody else for watching. Uh, I think I'd like to close with just a little wrap up about how the timeline goes again. So if you begin in the fall, say you're accepted, you have all your materials together, you've applied, you've made the rolling deadline, which you should say when that is again, I think. Uh, how quickly can you have an MBA? Two years? So if, you're, if you start in the 30 credit program, you have an undergraduate degree in business, you have work experience, you're ready to start the program this fall, it'll be 18 months to graduation. So you walk across the stage in May of 2019 and get your MBA. If uh, you're, you don't have an undergraduate in business, it would be May of 2020. Nice. You said the deadline was mid-August for mid this August, fall? Mid-August, yep. We keep on working on a rolling admissions basis over the yeah. course of summer because we know people's lives change and things come up and plans happen. Um, but we do, our classes are filling up quickly, so we would encourage a student to apply sooner than later. So if you're on the fence, there's plenty of time to apply and there's plenty of time to meet with somebody to think about whether or not you'd like to apply. Lisa Hall Blackmer has chimed in to say, I am in the program right now. I enjoy the topics covered and learning from the professors and classmates. So that's some nice, Lisa. a uh, nice Lisa. vote of confidence as well. Back in the, in the, in the wintertime. Is there anything else that any of the three of you would like to say about this program? And people watching at home, is there anything else that we can answer for you? So I would just like to say, again, uh, from the student perspective, um, I have looked at several programs cost and the convenience and the model, the cohort model, were the big selling points and um, I'm so happy I did it and as I said before, 
you know, the time's going to go by either way. Um, the difference is now uh, I, you know, have that MBA. I make more money. I, I enjoy a better lifestyle. And I think that that was the experience that everybody that I uh, did my cohort with also had. It's a, you get a lot out of the program. The, the learning is rich. It's in depth. Um, and it's, it's one of the things I enjoy the most about teaching at, the, at MCLA is, the, is teaching in the MBA program. This program is very powerful. It really helps the professionals of the region continue to grow. Um, the strength of the cohort is something that you don't see in many different programs. The networking opportunities, the opportunities for support, the understanding that everyone's traveling through this program for the same reason, and they're trying to balance their family. They're trying to balance their work life and obtain their MBA at the same time. And the strength of the faculty within this program. Um, the faculty will, are going to go out of their way to make sure that the students are supported and successful. Here is a question that has now been asked that I'm surprised was not asked earlier. What is the cost of the MBA program, either in total or per credit, or both? Sure. That's, that's Josh. Yeah. So for each class, it's um, $1,327 for the fall, starting this fall semester per course. So if we're looking at the 30 credit program, you're at 13,270. At the 45 credit program, you're at 19,900. Some of the programs I looked at, they cost that a semester. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so it was really stuff. So that's, a, that's an extremely competitive yeah. MBA program yes. cost. And we work sure. very closely with our financial aid office to help for opportunities for low interest student loans. Um, and we also can work with our um, student accounts office if a student uh, does need to do a payment plan throughout the process as well. Nice. Okay, I think with that, we're gonna conclude. Thank you everybody for watching along at home. Thank you everybody panelists for participating. And I'm going to, right as I finish this live session, I will comment with Josh's contact info. So if you have additional questions or you wanna sign up or you wanna apply or you're thinking about applying, any of that stuff, you can contact him. So thank you everybody, this has been great. And this is gonna be archived on our Facebook page in case you want to ever watch it again. Thank you. Thank you.